Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon thankful for life and thankful for the blessings. We pray you with Brother, Brother Jarrod as he brings to us the word, the words that you've given him. Be with him. We pray for the presence of our Holy Spirit and you bless all those who join and those who view it later. In Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. Amen. We'll begin with a song called The Voice of Jesus. a frog in my throat. I think you're better talk. Well, welcome everyone <laughs> to the 12 o'clock midday prayers. 
Um, we've got uh, Brother Gerard, he's 10 years old. Yes. And he's going to preach the word to us. We start them young on this programme. We do, it is one of the gems. So welcome everyone and the time is yours, Brother Gerard. Good afternoon, talk Leontes. Good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, thank you for the um, beautiful song and for the beautiful singing. It's always a delight to listen to the beautiful voices praising the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. I feel privileged to talk to you this afternoon on behalf of our almighty God. Before we start, I'll ask my brother Joachim to do the scripture reading. Be, be strong and of good courage. Do not nor afraid of them. The Lord, your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, the verse 6. Thank you, Joachim. The title of our sorry for that. So the title of our seminar today is From Morning to Joy. Imagine yourself waking up a morning and hearing people talking about the plan to exterminate all your compatriots. You should turn to the TV and what's on the top news? Everyone originally from your country must die. How will you feel? What will you do? You will probably perfect your relationship with God to make sure that even if you die, you will wake up on that great morning and be part of the saints. As Jesus Christ, our Savior, comes to get his children. You might also think of the best place to hide with your family and relatives, hoping that the law about killing you will expire one of these days for you to go back to your normal life. You might also demonstrate or raise legal action against the situation, or you might firstly go on your knees and pray for God to change the evil plans. In the time of trials, when the tempest is raging, when the storm is striking, when you think that there's no hope left, when your future seems to be compromised, shall you be afraid? Shall we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this afternoon. And thank you for um, making us gather today to listen to your word. Please open our mind, our soul, and our heart to listen to this message so that we won't only listen to it, but implement it in our day-to-day -day lives. In Jesus Christ name I pray. 
Amen. Our biblical, our biblical reflection of this afternoon comes from the book of Esther. Esther was a Jewish orphan who lived with her uncle Mordecai. Queen Vashti disobeyed King Ahasuerus, and as punishment, she was no longer a queen. So the king commanded all the most beautiful virgins of the country to be presented at his palace. Esther was part of those women, and as she was the most beautiful to the king's eyes, she chose her to become the queen. The story tells us Haman, the third most important person in the Middle Persian kingdom, did not like Mordecai at all. But the simple fact that Mordecai refused to bow to him, this made him angry. And after he discovered Mordecai was a Jew, he conceived a plot to exterminate the Jews, tricking the king and securing his permission to slaughter the Jews. And the date was set. When Mordecai learned of Haman's plot, he rose to the palace to inform Esther, weeping and clothed in sackcloth. Esther 4 verses 1 to 3 says, Mordecai moaned, and when he found about what had happened, he ripped his clothes, put on sackcloth, wiped us onto his body. Then he went through the city gate, weeping loudly in anger. When he came to the king's gate, not far from the palace, he stopped since those wearing sackcloth were not permitted to enter it and disrupt the mood of the court. In the meantime, as wars of the king's decree began to spread throughout all the provinces, terrible distress grew among the Jews. They fasted, wept, screamed out in misery. Like Mordecai, many put on sackcloth and asses. Mordecai mourned. All the Jews mourned. And when Esther first learned of Haman's plot and the threat to the Jews, her reaction was one of helplessness. She could not speak to the king, as there was a law stating that everyone who enters the king's inner court without being invited will be killed. Unless the king holds out his golden scepter to the person, so no one was allowed to enter the king's court. Even the queen. As it was, Esther had not been invited by the king for 30 days. It seemed that life was not at all easy in the royal household. Esther's explanation could imply she lived in fear of the king. As such, she was hesitating to approach him or those she had to talk to him. What a difficult situation. What would you do if you were in the same situation with King Queen Esther? As the tempest was raging, as the storm was striking, as her boat was about to sink and kill all her people, Esther lifted her head up to the hill where her strength came from. Esther knew that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the almighty creator king, is the only one that could help her changing the, their situation. The king had agreed to pass the law, and Hamon was over the moon, as his plan was about to come to execution. He was probably celebrating his victory with his people, as he knew his plan would definitely work. But Haman ignored that the children of God are precious to his eyes. No one messes with them, as he is always there to rescue them as he has promised. Joshua 1 verses 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you whenever you go. Amen. Queen Esther was strong and courageous. She knew God was with her. She trusted and believed in the God she served. She was faithful. Following Mordecai's insistence, she resolved to try her best to save her people, and she said to Mordecai, in preparation for my audience with the king, do this, gather all the Jews in Susa, and fast and pray for me, intercede for me, 
for three days and nights, abstain from all food and drink. My maids and I will join you in this time. And after the three days, I will go to the king and plead my case, even though it means breaking the law. If I die, I die. If I live, I live. If I die, I die. A planet and obedient Queen Esther became a woman of action. And that's what God expects from us. We should be men and women of action. When you face difficult situation, take action. When you are mourning, take action. When you are in pain, action again. Action, action, and action. The very first step to resolving a problem is to carry them to God in prayer, and he will lead you out of the trouble according to his plan in your life. Esther took action, as he did not skip the most important and first step, prayer. She asked all the Jews to join her in prayer and fasting for three days. So, during three days, they made good use of the privilege of prayer. As Sister G. White said about prayer, Prayer is opening of is the opening of their heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. So the Jews talked to their father. They lifted their head to the mountain where they knew that strength and hope would come. They went up and met God, surrendered that case into his hand, knowing that their best friend will always do what is good for them. Amen. Why are you afraid of my brother? Why are you scared of my sister? Don't you trust the Lord, your God? When you go through the stress and difficulties of life, why do you think God has abandoned you? Where is your faith? By faith, after three days of prayer and fasting. With her people, Esther put on her most beautiful clothes and perfume, got her hair styled in a special way, and when she was in her most beautiful state, she went to the king's court. One thing she probably had in mind at the moment was what the Bible says in First. In 1 John 5, verses 40 to 15. This is confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we asked of him. King es Queen Esther approached King Ahasuerus without any invitation. It was a bit like seeing an angry lion with an open mouth, ready to bite anything, and you run into him. If I die, then I die. I die for my people. I die because it will be God's will. I prayed, and may God's will be done in my life, in my people's life. Well, the king not only did not kill her, but promised her to grant her, as yet unspoken, request. Hallelujah. How pleasant it is to realize that God answers prayer and gives us even more than what we have asked for. It's a super moment of understatement. Esther asked the king to, to a dinner party. The king, accompanied by his uh, visitor Haman, attended Esther's banquet and again seek to discover her request, which she once more deflects from an invitation to another dinner party. At the second dinner party, the king again asks Esther what her request was so he could grant her what she wanted. Queen Esther boldly asks that she and her people should be spared and that Haman had planned to kill all the Jews for money. The king was filled with anger against Haman and had him hanged on that very pole that Haman had set up for Mordecai. Queen Esther and Mordecai were given Haman's estates, 
and they were honored with royal garments, and a decree was written to protect all the Jews. The book ends with Mordecai elevated to the office of Grand Vizors and power now concentrates in the hands of Esther. Yes, it was party time, as the days were in the Jewish rest rested from their enemies, and the mouth which was turned in unto them from sorrow to good, and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and setting portions of one another and gifts to the poor. To this day, the Jews celebrate do that, and it's called Purim. The Jews celebrated their victory against the wicked Haman, and the Jews went from mourning to joy. What a beautiful end to the story. How beautiful and relieving is it to know that God answers our prayer and even blesses, blesses us above our expectations if we trust in his power. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, be prayer and by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God as the peace of God, which transcends from all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christian, in the Christ Jesus. Yes, God answers our prayers according to his will, and because we trust in him, we know that he only has plans to prosper us. We need nothing but to trust and obey as he said in his word. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And I carry the same message from you this afternoon. My brother, my sister, do not be afraid. Our God always keeps us always keeps his promises he promised he would never leave us or forsake us Esther believed God would help her saving her people they prayed and asked help from God God responded to their prayer and gave them more than what they had asked for yes our God is a God of miracles capable of turning the impossible into possible stop mourning do not be afraid just trust and obey him. Carry everything to him in prayer. With the certitude, you will receive what you have asked according to his will. God can give you more, less or nothing from what you have asked for, but he answers to a faithful prayer, but, but, he, but his answer to a faithful prayer is always the best for us. May God open our eyes to his wisdom, direct our desire to his will and open our eyes to his grand vision. Amen. 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 We'd like to thank Brother Jared for that uh, uh, encouraging um, presentation. Um, it, was, it was nice and clear, and you know, it uh, give us encouragement stay faithful to God, to do what he wants us to do. Even though things may look really terrible, you've got to stay faithful to God. And, uh, you know, God will see you through like he saw Esther through and all those who've gone through similar experiences. Things look, no hope, but God can bring hope where in a no hope situation. Um, anybody got any thoughts I'd like to add or um, any experiences where they've gone through something that, the, the, just the, you could not, you couldn't see a way out, but God brought the way for you. Anybody got anything to share?
Uh, Sister Catherine, are you, are, you, are you saying something? Because you're on mute, if you are, because you came out, the mic came open. Sorry, Sister Arlene, are you talking? Yes, I thought you were talking, but you got your microphone closed. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you, you said uh, anyone to... <coughs> <laughs> who has got something to say that's right yes I am saying I'm talking about the prayer the strength of a prayer when you think of Esther one it was not a day to see the king, and the king had not invited her for many days. For that one, only I could have feared to go. But Esther followed the word which said, be courageous, be strong, don't fear. And again, <clears throat> in the letters of Paul, God says, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but I gave you the spirit of, of love, sound mind, and we must not fear. So if Esther was like me, who always fear anything, anything, I'm afraid of anything, if he, she did that, the whole nation of Israel was going to perish because Haman had been given the permission to kill them. But because of the word of prayer, a sincere prayer to God, this, the whole nation of Israel was saved because of the one woman who was strong, who knew whom we see that he, he, she indeed trusted in God. So her prayers were heard because they were sincere. So thank you very much, Brother Gerard, for reminding us about the power of prayer. It makes us be aware that when we come to fear, if you can say a little word of prayer, God will open the way for us. So thank you very much for your little sermon. It, it's, it has really revived me about prayer, the, the power of prayer. We always... Uh, <clears throat> underestimate prayer. Prayer is the key to open the heaven gates. We have been told many times and we know it, but we have never taken it serious. If we have taken it serious, you know, like the <clears throat> sermons we were getting from Brother uh, Pastor Jackson, honestly, if we could stand for what we mean about loving God, about trusting in God, about serving our God, we will stand. Even if the enemy comes to us, we will understand. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie, for that comment. Amen. 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 Wow. As I was looking at Gerard, I'm saying, Lord, how about my grandchildren? Where are they for you? Say that again. Say hey. that again, my sister. It's my prayer to see my grandchildren doing what Gerard is doing. Please, Lord Jesus, it's my prayer. You know what, Gerald, what I can just say, 
may God bless you like Mishi, Abed, Nigo, and Daniel in the lion's den. <laughs> the king of jungle <laughs> was nothing. So may God bless you, Gerard. Gerard. And those who are behind the scenes, your parents, may God bless them. Those who were at Kath and Lee last time, tackling twins were there. A story was told. They get in the church, you know, these Muslims or whatever, these antichrist. They come with the cross and Jesus' face was there. They say everyone in this church come and spit on this face of Jesus. Everyone was going and put saliva and spitting at the face of Jesus. But this young girl like Gerard, <laughs> she just take a dress and wipe, wipe the face of Jesus and stand before those Muslims and say, I can't do that to my savior. Just kill me. And you know what? Those Muslims kill all the people who spit on Jesus. They say you are lying. Only this 14-year girl is telling the truth. So if we stand for the truth, like Esther, if I perish, I perish. Gerard, may God bless you so that you say, if I perish, I perish from today, Gerard. Stand up for Christ like that 14-year-old girl. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Auntie. Yes, that story. It's sometimes children do what sometimes children do what adults are afraid to do. You know, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a moving story that you know, um, children standing up for right in, in the face of adults, even, even perhaps their parents. You know, they stand for the right, and that's good. Any more thoughts, anyone? Uh, yes, um, when Gerard was speaking, what comes in my mind, I was connecting it with what we are learning as well this week from Elder Sejwa, that uh, God is the master of all situations. And if Esther could take things in um, human mind, he couldn't accomplish anything. But if we uh, take God to be the master of all situations. All things are possible with God. Thank you very much for this sermon. It's so uh, nice to hear from a young person like Jela to uh, share the word of God. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. We praise God for that. Amen. Any thought? Any closing thoughts? Would someone like to pray to close this section? Yes, I can, I can pray. No, thank you. Let me take the prayer position. <laughs> Before I pray, can someone read for me? Matthew 8, 18 verse 10. Matthew 18, verse 10, before I pray. Anyone who want to read for me? Matthew 18, verse 10. Yes, please. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. 
Amen. Gerard, can you write that verse down? Matthew 18, verse 10. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come. May your will be done all of this afternoon, midday prayer. Thank you, O Lord, to see this young man preaching the truth and this truth from the Bible, from the Bible. And you promise us this truth is going to set us free. As I'm kneeling here, I want to pray. I wish someone prayed for me when I was this age. Lord, I know you hear my prayer. I know. I want to pray for Jera and all the children who are in this class. I know they've got their class. Who are in this class? May you mark them with your blood, Lord Jesus, from today and forevermore. We want to see these children in heaven. Not them only. All oh, the children. Even Lord, our grandchildren, we raise their parents in church and they are no longer going with our grandchildren to church. Lord Jesus, it's not too late. Bring our grandchildren to Jesus. Jesus, you love these little ones. Bring every little one in your nailed hands so that no one will take them out of your nailed hands. Start with the Gerard and all the young ones. I know you hear our prayers, even the silent prayers, which is prayed here because of Gerard. Jesus, bless this young. Bless him from today and forevermore. If he was not listening to the parents, Luke 2, 52, I claim the verse for Jeff. Enlarge his territory. Bless the parents so that they don't lack anything, anything, so that they raise this young man. Because I remember Paul saying to Timothy, if I look at you, I see your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. May the mother of this young man be a Eunice. And us make us, Lois, even we don't have our grandchildren, we, we, we talk to them on the phone. I'm, me, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Bless Gerard. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 I'm pray, Sister McGarvey. Now we'll just share the screen. Who likes to pray for praise and thanks? Sister Tackling Twins, before the praise, the one who is going to praise my daughter who was three days in labor is holding a 4 kg bouncing boy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah, lovely. That was answered prayer. Thank you. Who's going to pray for praise and thanks? I'll do that one then. 
um, Confession of Sin. I'll do that one. Is it for the confession of sin? Yeah, yes. confession of sin. Can like I do it, please? Yes. Yeah, I was I was trying to speak, but my <laughs> my mic is not working here, so I had to join Jared. Sorry Matthew, about that. Matthew six fourteen, or one of your choice. Matthew six. Yeah, 14. verse fourteen. Fourteen. Thank you. Who'd like to pray for the Holy Spirit? I will. Thank you. And the text is Romans 5, verse 5. And who would like to pray for prayer retreat ministries? Prayer retreat ministries? I'll pray for that one. What's the text? Yeah. 16. Um, um. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Yeah, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. So we'll have a short prayer that we're right with God and then praise and thanks uh, to begin. Thank you. Amen. Isaiah 25, verse 1. O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels are of old, faithfulness and truth. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise your holy name. Your name is above all other names and is worthy to be praised. We praise you for the good news this uh, that Sister Mugabe's daughter has had a baby, a, ba a bouncing baby boy. We pray, Lord, that you be with her and be with the baby. We pray, Lord, that, that you're blessed then. And we thank you for the good news. We pray, Lord, that you will be with us. We thank you for all the good things that we see all around us, the birds flying the, 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 and singing in the trees. We thank you for the brooks, the streams, the rivers, the flowers, and everything that is beautiful on this earth. We know it has been marred by 6,000 years of sin, but we know that, that, um, that things are still beautiful um, in places. And we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for giving us these truths in these last days that we may share it with others so they can be blessed also. And we thank you for all that, for, for giving us everything that, that we need, not the things that we desire, but the things that we need. And we pray, Lord, that you'll be with us and keep us faithful in these last days until you come to take us home. This is my prayer with praise in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Matthew 6, verse 14. If you forgive other when they sin against you, your heavenly Father, we also forgive you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for the grace you freely offer us, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us this afternoon to gather on this platform, and thank you for the message you have vehicle to us to the, the, this afternoon through your servants, Jared. Dear Lord, help us model your ways when we make our amen to those who have hurt and offer our forgiveness to those who have injured us. 
Help us to set aside our selfishness and speak the truth in love. Help us, Lord, to always be ready to forgive those who have done wrong against us and always show love and kindness to everyone for your name to be glorified. Father, we bring before you the pain of where we have been wrong. By your grace, dear Lord, help us to wring out our pain at the foot of the cross, Jesus. Jehovah, our God, thank you for your promise of putting our sins behind your back, to bury them in the depth of the sea and remove them from us as far as the east from the, east, the, the west. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse us, dear Lord, from every single sin. Father, we thank you that our many sins can be forgiven through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We pray this with thanksgiving in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, you shall testify of me. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we want to thank you for your love, for your mercy upon our lives. I pray, Jehovah, that indeed, as you have told us in your word, that you are going to send us your Holy Spirit, the Comforter. I pray that you may fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit, so that, Lord, in all the circumstances that we are in, with the various challenges that we may be facing, we may be comforted by your Holy Spirit. May he be in us, Lord, to remind us of your word, to remind us, Jehovah, the path that we ought to take, we pray that even as we read your word, may he, Lord, interpret all scripture unto us so that we may understand, we may be able, Lord, to live in a manner that pleases you. We thank you because we know you promised even in Luke that if there is anything that you are willing to give unto us as your children, is the Holy Spirit. May he lead, may he guide. Above all, may you grant us the obedience, Lord, to his word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go, go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go, go, go. Baptizing them in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless prayer retreat ministries. You continue to bless... Um, each program that's put on because we know it's feeding the people we know that we're not fed in some of the churches we're not getting the messages but we're thankful for the speakers and we're thankful especially today for the for brother Gerard is who's given us a timely message for us to look to Jesus and know that he can give us the strength to overcome and that things will go according to his will and so we pray that you'll be with us all we pray that you'll bless the um, all the speakers who do take part, we pray you bless the committee who runs the programmes and we pray you bless those who join from day to day. And um, We're thankful that it just didn't stay the one week as planned but it's been going now for over three years and you've blessed us with the speakers, you've blessed us with so much. And so we ask to continue to bless this ministry, it might go from strength to strength and continue to further the cause of heaven in these last days and that the present truth may be preached so that people may be warned and know what they need to do to um, 
be ready for when Jesus comes because we know that Jesus is coming soon and we long to see Jesus come in the clouds of glory and be able to say, say those precious words lo this is our God we have waited for him and he will save us please keep us faithful until this hour we pray in Jesus worthy and precious name Amen Amen I will just stop Amen. with the question and then it's the, uh, the, the prayer that the Lord's laid on your heart <laughs> 